At the completion of this video, you will know how to conduct the single tube method. This video follows ASTM method E2871 standard test method for determining disinfectant efficacy against biofilm grown in the CDC biofilm reactor using the single tube method. Researchers doing biofilm efficacy testing for regulatory purposes should follow the appropriate regulatory guidance documents. The single tube method uses Pseudomonas aeruginosa or Staphylococcus aureus biofilm grown on coupons in the CDC biofilm reactor according to ASTM method E2562 or E3161. However, the single tube method may be modified to accommodate testing of biofilm grown in other reactors. This diagram shows a summary of the single tube method conducted in 50 milliliter conical vials. Rods are removed from the CDC biofilm reactor and rinsed. Individual coupons are dropped into 50 or 250 milliliter conical vials fitted with splash guards. The splash guards are then removed and disinfectant or buffered dilution water is added. After a specified contact time, neutralizer is added and the vials are vortexed and sonicated to remove and disaggregate the biofilm. The samples are then diluted, plated, and incubated prior to enumeration. Sterilize a volumetric flask, graduated cylinder, filtration funnels and flasks, neutralizer and deionized water, or other diluent for preparing the disinfectant. For more information on neutralization, see the section on helpful hints. To sterilize splash guards, place them in an autoclave tray. Cover the tray with foil and autoclave for 20 minutes on fast exhaust. The biofilm on the coupons in this reactor has been grown according to ASTM method E2562. See Center for Biofilm Engineering Standardized Biofilm Methods Laboratory Training Video, CDC Biofilm Reactor Methods. Alternatively, the biofilm may be grown according to ASTM E3161. Prepare the disinfectant at the treatment concentration within three hours of use. Confirm the treatment concentration if required. If necessary, equilibrate the disinfectant and neutralizer to room temperature of 21 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. Ensure that the water level in the sonicator is at the manufacturer's recommended depth. Degas the water in the sonicator for 5 minutes. If your sonicator does not have a degas setting, run the sonicator for 5 minutes. Eight conical vials are needed, five for treatment and three for controls. When coupons fall into conical vials, droplets may splash out of reach of the disinfectant. Therefore, inserts called splash guards are required for the five treatment vials. Remove a conical vial lid and use flame sterilized forceps to insert a sterile splash guard into each vial. Splash guards are not necessary for control coupons. Loosen the caps on the three control vials. Aseptically remove a rod from the CDC biofilm reactor and gently dip it into the 50 milliliter conical vial containing 30 milliliter sterile buffered dilution water to rinse any loosely attached or planktonic cells. Remove excess water from the rod. Hold the rod sideways and hover it over a vial. Orient a coupon over the opening of the vial and loosen the set screw with a flame-sterilized hex screwdriver. If the coupon does not readily fall out of the rod, push directly in the center of the coupon with the hex screwdriver. If a rod or coupon contacts the vial and or splash guard, replace it with a new coupon, vial, and splash guard. Continue by rinsing each rod and dropping coupons to obtain a set of eight coupons. After the coupons have been dropped into the vials, remove the splash guards using sterile forceps and loosely replace the caps on the vials. Pipe at 4 milliliters of disinfectant into a treatment vial by gently expelling the liquid along the inside of the vial. Do not stream the disinfectant directly onto the coupon. Cap the vial and gently swirl one to two times to distribute the disinfectant evenly around the coupon. Repeat the addition of disinfectant to each vial, staggering by 30 to 60 seconds. After the disinfectant has been added to all five treatment vials, add 4 milliliters buffered dilution water to the three control vials. 
allow the vials to remain at room temperature, 21 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius, for the appropriate contact time. Here, our contact time is 10 minutes. At the end of the contact time, add 36 milliliters of neutralizer to each vial in the same order as treatment was added, maintaining the time interval between each vial. After the neutralizer is added to a vial, replace the cap and briefly vortex the vial. Repeat for each of the remaining vials. Removal and disaggregation of the biofilm from the coupon is achieved via a five-step vortex and sonicate procedure. Vortex the vials on the highest setting, ensuring a complete vortex for 30 plus or minus 5 seconds. Transfer the vials to a test tube rack suspended in a degas sonicator so that the liquid levels in the vials matches the liquid level in the bath. Do not let the vials or rack touch the bottom or sides of the sonicator. Sonicate the vials for 30 plus or minus 5 seconds at 45 plus or minus 5 kilohertz using normal mode if the sonicator has variable settings. Repeat the vortex step. Sonicate once more and end with a final vortex. Pre-wet a 0.45 micrometer polyether sulfone membrane filter using sterile buffered dilution water. Filter a minimum of 25% of the volume from a treatment vial and rinse the filter with sterile buffered dilution water. Using flame sterilized forceps, roll the filter onto an agar plate to minimize trapping air bubbles between the agar and the membrane. Repeat for each treatment vial. Serially dilute the treated and control samples in sterile buffered dilution water and plate appropriately. Once dry, Invert and incubate the plates at 36 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius for 24 to 72 hours. Count the appropriate number of colonies for the plating method used. Calculate the biofilm log density and log reduction using formulas described in the knowledge sharing articles on the Center for Biofilm Engineering website. The link is shown here. This test method was developed using 50 milliliter conical vials. The conical geometry allows for disinfectant exposure to all surfaces of the biofilm covered coupon. When adding disinfectant to the vials, a lapse of 30 to 60 seconds between each vial allows time for pipetting and ensures that an exact contact time is achieved for each coupon. For foaming disinfectants or for disinfectants requiring a larger volume of neutralizer, use 250 milliliter conical vials. To neutralize 4 milliliters of disinfectant in a 250 milliliter vial, use 196 milliliters neutralizer. 196 milliliter aliquots of neutralizer can be prepared to pour into the treatment vials at the end of the contact time. Verify the neutralization of the active compound according to ASTM method E1054 prior to conducting the single tube method. When a coupon is dropped into a conical vial, bacteria may splash up along the sides above the volume of treatment to be added. These untreated bacteria would then be mixed with the treated bacteria once the neutralizer is added. To prevent this, use a splash guard. Ensure splash guards fit in the 50 or 250 milliliter conical vials so that the bottom of the splash guard is seated at the top of the conical segment. Optimize and verify placement of the vials in the bath prior to testing. Microscopy can confirm that the equipment used for removal and disaggregation of biofilm is effective. Verify removal and disaggregation using the same conical vials. Neutralize treatment volume and number of vials to replicate actual test conditions. For experiments in which more than eight coupons are removed from the reactor and evaluated in batches over a period of time, maintain the reactor in continuous flow conditions such that the total amount of time does not exceed 24 plus or minus two hours. To maintain appropriate flow dynamics within the reactor, insert sterile blank rods in place of removed rods. Check that samples take less than one minute to filter. If not, plan to aliquot smaller volumes over multiple membranes.